when I launched the vlog, the Dallas Morning News did a full page story and it was called Meet the Blogger. And blogger was written in huge type all the way across this page. I would actually go around town and I met with different boutique owners and I would introduce myself, tell them a little bit about my background, my client list and say, hey, would you pay me a commission if I sell your clothes to my clients? It's essentially a salesperson that was just on the road. So my clients really preferred to go shop online and to shop through my blog. They could do it at night after bedtime over a glass of wine. They didn't have to book time with me or make time for me in their life. I had cut myself out of my business. Baxter was at that time my boyfriend and again looking over my shoulder at the business and said, well, you know, you've cut yourself out of your personal shopping business, but you seem to really like blogging. Like, do you want to keep doing that? To be honest, I didn't really understand that world very well. Um, but what I did understand was that this big thing was happening, and that was that traditional media was just getting crazy disrupted by these oftentimes looked at strange, you know, people taking pictures of themselves, putting them on their blogs. Let's talk to other bloggers and see how they were um, making money, um, and, and none of them were. The mechanics of this personal styling business had been figured out offline, why don't we bring this online and, and do it through technology, given that that's really, that's really my background. The, he asked me what it would be called, and I said, reward style. He said, okay, reward style, and I said, well, if you have great taste, then people will buy the things you're suggesting. Early in 2011, we launched for me, and we launched um, for a handful of friends as like testers. And I remember one of the girls, her first sale was like a pair of white jeans. And she called and was like, I just made money. Someone actually bought something. And it was just the beginning of this business that I would have never expected would happen. We're painting a painting, classified. Actually, a question people sometimes ask me is, was it like risky? Like, was it scary to start this business? Really nice little bathroom. Hello. Candidly, the answer is no, because I didn't have another option. <laughs> um, you know, I was already living at home. I was already eating my dad's cereal. Here's our lounge room. And so all I really had was a dream and that I needed to make that work. I think Baxter has really always helped to push the envelope and to take risks and to invest in the future. Yeah, so starting uh, a business with your girlfriend is, uh, it sort of can go two ways. And for us, luckily, um, it worked out. But uh, it was obviously challenging because we were both building a business, trying to figure out, um, she was trying to figure out if I was the one. I knew it at the beginning. In the first year of that tool, our consumers purchased about $10 million worth of goods through the newsletter. And then the next year they purchased about $50 million worth of stuff through the newsletter. And then the next year they purchased $150 million worth of stuff through the newsletter. And then we said, wow, a billion seems ridiculous. Like, could we ever get to a billion dollars uh, uh, in terms of sales driven through the platform by our creators? What does success feel like? Like, what does that mean to you? And at, at 4.30, Wes came in and he said, guys, we just hit a billion dollars. If you had the app, you could screenshot anywhere and we'd serve you up all that information automatically. That was the moment where we started to consciously uncouple from specific platforms. And we said, you know what we predict is that in the same way that like death and tax are sure things, so is a new social platform.
it was hitting a hundred influencers who have earned more than a million dollars through the reward style platform. And so that is one of the biggest trophies for us and our team because it's what we're here to do and now being able to do it at scale. And by the way, they're all women. You know, we have already had brands spend a billion dollars with creators through our platform. Pretty certain no one's done that other than the LTK family. Everything that they're doing, that value was quantified and paid out at $1 billion. We've made it our life mission effectively uh, as, a, as a family company to make sure and invest heavily in pursuing that goal for them. Um, and we get great pleasure in doing that. I feel like our creators have never been set up better for future success than they are right now. What's also cool is we've been thinking about products and ideas for obviously for 10 plus years. What we're about to do over the next six to 12 months is kind of completing some of these big ideas and then getting to some things that we haven't, the team and others are even, are, that are dreaming about right now. Now it's been 10 years and our baby is changing names. You know, we launched as Reward Style, and then people called us RS for short, and then a couple years later we launched Like to Know It, and we were Like to Know It, so people called it Like It to Know It, somebody Still called it Like It, Kiki. It, I don't know, they had a lot of names. Our customers just started calling it LTK, and so kind of the common name for us has been LTK for the last little while. And so we just feel like this is an opportunity to simplify and just embrace it. We're LTK. Going for it. It's official. <laughs>